Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this brief evening update on what is going on for Invest 95L. We will be looking at uh, the latest from the NHC as well as conditions out there ahead of it. And we'll also be looking at what is currently happening across the Caribbean and surrounding areas. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, so we're going to be starting out with the satellite imagery and we're zooming in to Northern South America first. And so here we can see that there is quite a bit of activity developing across some areas this afternoon. Some spots in Colombia, Venezuela, going to Guyana as well, even going over into French Guiana, we also see some activity. Some thunderstorms are near uh, the southwestern part of Trinidad. You can let me know what is happening for you. Going up into the ABC Islands, I see a lot of cloud cover, maybe with some brief showers at times. So uh, we see some increase in moisture here. So things not as dry and hot uh, compared to before now. And so as we head up, let's go further up here and we can see that across most of the Eastern Caribbean, there is at least some cloud cover. So not everywhere is experiencing this cloud cover. For some areas, it might be sunny, but uh, we're seeing a lot of cloud cover over here, maybe with some brief rainfall at times. We even see some thunderstorm activity over in parts of Northwestern Puerto Rico and some spots in the Dominican Republic being induced by that increase in moisture across the area. But take a look at this contrast as we head further west here we see that this now there is this pocket of drier conditions and that is as a result of the plethora of dry air that is in the area uh, but over into some spots in Central America we can see some thunderstorms so uh, parts of Guatemala El Salvador Nicaragua uh, going down to off the, uh, off the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica even some thunderstorms developing in Panama this evening but again for the Bay Islands for uh, parts of Mexico going to Jamaica the Cayman Islands Cuba most of the Bahamas Haiti there isn't much activity this afternoon. Similar story for the, uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands as well. But uh, the chance exists for some isolated shower activity across some spots. Nothing too crazy expected though. As we head a bit uh, further up uh, to the north here, we can see that in the Gulf of Mexico, there is quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity also spreading across some states such as Florida, going to Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, and in the northwestern Bahamas, we also see some thunderstorm activity out there. And so now we want to go ahead and move on to the main development region. And here we can see that uh, to the left side of your screen, that is our disturbance 95L. But further to the east is a tropical wave that has recently emerged. So uh, models are hinting that that one could potentially try to get itself together and maybe become something as we head into next week but as of right now uh, this is not a cause for concern as of right now so maybe down the line it could try to get itself together and become something but only time will tell and of course I will be keeping you posted on it as time goes by but the main focus is on 95L so let us zoom in here we can see that it is producing some shower and thunderstorm activity not a whole lot uh, but it is definitely there and more plentiful compared to this morning and especially early this morning as we look at the visible imagery we can even see some of that uh, counterclockwise spin so tropical cyclones or uh, low pressure systems in the northern hemisphere they rotate in a counterclockwise or anti-clockwise direction uh, while high pressure systems rotate clockwise in the southern hemisphere it is the opposite so uh, here we can see some spinach with the system here however it is unlikely that it will become a tropical cyclone so as we look at the latest from the NHC here we can see that uh, for the 2 p.m. update, the chance remains at 40% through the next seven days. And it has limited time because once it nears the Caribbean and enters, the wind shear is likely to kick up and that will prevent any further intensification. Uh, and so we'll be looking at the wind shear map very shortly. But going on to the dry air map, the Saharan earlier map, here you can see that there is that, again, there is that pocket of dry air across parts of the Western Caribbean, going up to uh, Florida and the Bahamas as well, and Turks and Caicos Islands. So that is preventing any major rainfall activity within the area. Uh, there's a little bit of a break over in the eastern islands as we saw there is some increase in moisture over there there we have our disturbance and that next tropical wave and across most of the main development region is a lot of dry air and that is going to be the main problem uh, for 95L that is the main problem uh, that is the reason we're not seeing anything significant with it as of right now which is good so uh, let's see what's going to be happening with it it is likely to bring a lot of rainfall to the eastern islands of the Caribbean not for everywhere 
but many areas will be receiving quite a bit of rainfall, especially going to the southern leeward and northern woodward islands, including Barbados. And so, guys, of course, I will continue to keep you posted on this as time goes by. But as we head to Tuesday, go into Wednesday, that is when most impacts will be felt from this system here. Now, in terms of development, oh, we're just looking at the model intensity guidance, and we can see that for the most part, some members are not expecting that this will become anything again. That seems like the most likely outcome that this will just remain as a disturbance, making its way by bringing a lot of rainfall. And I don't want you guys to underestimate it just because it is no longer expected to develop. Yes, that is some good news, but it can still induce a lot of rainfall and that can trigger flooding and bring impacts comparable to that of uh, tropical cyclones. Please do not take any unnecessary risks and take the necessary precautions we are required. And so uh, some of these members still uh, models still expecting that we could see a tropical storm become of this, but I highly doubt that at this point in time. Going on to the wind shear map. So uh, we see the white outline here of the Caribbean. And there we have our disturbance out there. And so those red lines you're seeing uh, are those enclosures. They represent unfavorable wind shear. That is where uh, the winds in the upper atmosphere are pretty strong and they basically displace activity and prevent thunderstorms from growing and intensifying. So overall that would impact the system and prevents any major intensification. Uh, but going to the yellow lines that represents neutral shear. Meanwhile, the green uh, represents that the wind shear isn't too problematic out there for developing cyclones. So uh, it would allow for some intensification. And we see that 95L is in a favorable environment in terms of the wind shear. But again, that dry air is the main uh, inhibiting factor. So guys, of course, I will continue to keep you posted as per usual. Stay tuned for my update video tomorrow morning. And uh, that is pretty much it for right now. And so I hope that you found this video to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will respond once I get the chance. And as always, remember to be weatherwise.